Hello and thanks for joining me. If you're new here, I'm Perry, the writer and illustrator of the Floof and Feathers webcomic, a Slices of Life series based on our real life pets. And today I'm talking about how I use Procreate on iPad to color my comics. As a reminder, even if you don't have Procreate, don't leave just yet. Everything I'll be talking about can more or less be applied to almost any drawing software you have access to. Just the names of buttons and overall appearance will obviously look different from what you're seeing here, but it should all still function essentially the same way. So, with that being said, let's get into it. Previously in the series, I touched on the topics of basic character design, as well as using Procreate to set up a comic strip template and sketching out the base of the comic. You can click here to watch these videos or check out the link to the series in the description below. After all of that, we finally have the outline of a comic. I know, a little anticlimactic, I'll admit. It uh, doesn't really look like much of anything yet, does it? But then again, that's why we're here. Because in today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can add color to your drawings and give them some true depth and bring them to life. Also, I know I've said this before as well, but I feel the need to reiterate. Everything in these videos is coming from someone with absolutely no training or formal art education to speak of. Frankly, I have no idea what I'm doing beyond what I've taught myself over the last couple of years experimenting with digital drawing. But hey, if I can do it, then anyone can. So, enough chit chat. Let's get to the art. So again, as I said before, as you can see, uh, as of right now, the outlining for this comic doesn't really look like much of anything. Uh, you know, you, you can clearly see Finnegan away the, uh, the, the, the basics of their features, the outline of how it looks, but, you know, it, it doesn't look like the, the, the comic strips that you're used to if you've seen anything on, on my website. But that's what we're going to fix now. Once we add some color and some basic shading to this, it's going to be like night and day. You'll see an almost immediate difference. So uh, that being said, let's get into doing some coloring. So we'll bring up the first panel here. Now you'll remember also in my last video, I talked about the importance of using layers, especially on working with Procreate or even working with really any digital drawing software platform. Layers are your best friend. They're going to keep everything separate and neat and tidy and you will thank yourself later for it. I'll show you why. So right now, uh, you can just see it. There's the sketch layer there and here's the actual outlining layer that I'm working in now. So I'm going to not take my own advice, not start a new layer yet. And let's go ahead and just drop some color into thin again. So as you can see, okay, it still fills in just fine. Um, but the problem is, even, even if I go ahead and alpha lock this, whoop, that is not what I meant to do. Even if I alpha lock this, um, alpha lock, that will freeze the coloring here and it makes it so that you, you can't manipulate the color outside of this layer. But even if I do that, when I'm shading, you'll see, uh, it, we'll turn our pen down a little bit, uh, it will still go over the outline. And uh, it'll, it will affect the other colors as well. And uh, that one, it, it's a little dark there just because of the color of Finn's fur. So actually, we'll go ahead and let's try his collar instead. I'll do some blue. That'll probably help a little bit. So I'm going to keep it on the same layer as the outline, fill that in, but then when we go to do shading, because the color of the collar is on the same layer as the outlining, you see it goes, it goes right over top of the outline. So you have to really be careful what you draw. And again, we'll go ahead. And even with alpha lock, it still goes over the line because the outline is the same layer as the color and the collar. So it, it doesn't really help at all. It's still all the same layer and it's all affected. So if you did color on the same layer as the outline when you're getting ready to do shading, you have to just be really, really careful to not go over 
that outline there, which is which is doable. It's fine. Um, it just is extremely time consuming, and it leaves a large margin for error uh, as you move forward. So I find it's always best when you're coloring. First, I'm going to start a new layer. Move that under the underline or the yeah the the outline. And then I'm actually going to select the outlining layer here, and I'm going to make that a reference layer. And you'll see why I'll, I'll turn the reference off. Watch what happens when we try to color thin. See, and it just immediately fills the whole screen because Procreate, it doesn't know that you want the color to stop at the outline. So you select that and make that a reference now, when you go to fill in on your color layer, it just goes to the lines and it stops. And you can fill in little details as you go. So that just helps keep things, you know, it keep, keeps your color separate from the outline and it's going to make it a lot easier to color and shade. So uh, actually, let's go ahead and uh, fill in some of the color on Finn and Libby first, but we'll get some base colors going. And actually, one thing I'll show you now, whenever I'm coloring my comics, this is just a personal preference, I will actually make a different layer for each separate color that I work with, just because of the fact that uh, this will help to keep everything sort of separate, separated later, and it makes it easier to shade individual colors and not have to worry about possibly one color bleeding over another or affecting other parts of, of, of the drawing. So let's go ahead and uh, start filling this in with some color. Now, one thing you'll see, I just added this layer behind the other colors I'm working with. That's because I'm going to make this the background, the, the wall behind them. Oh, and here's another important lesson. Check your outlining to make sure that all the lines connect and close. Now that we fill that in, let's try that again. Pick our background wall. There we go. And the reason I move that behind the other colors is so that when I'm filling in these little gaps rather than having to drag and drop the color into each of them, because this is behind Finn's head, I can just go like this. Oh, and I colored him in a little bit there. I can just go like this behind him and fill that in and none of it touches the rest of the drawing. So that just makes things a little bit easier. I'll keep the floor on a layer behind them as well. Drop that in. Fill that. Uh, and one other thing, when you're doing this, if you're going to be shading your colors, even if a character has a lot of white on them, like, uh, like Olivia or Finnegan here, you you will want to actually fill that in with white color from your color drop because otherwise you won't be able to do shading over a blank space and when you're filling in white i actually find it useful to turn the background color off because then that shows you this blank space and you can actually see exactly where you need to drop in that color. So that way there's, there's very little to no guesswork. 
because otherwise it's very easy to, uh, to miss a spot. You can turn that back on. So while we're talking colors, I'll also show you a little trick that I do to color Olivia's beak. Because right, if you know anything about bird beaks, especially if you've ever seen an actual photo of Olivia, her beak is not just one color, it's kind of a, a blend of, of several colors. So what I do is I have a color palette set aside here. You might hear in the background Finnegan and Pippin coming upstairs to join us. Uh, but I have a color palette of some of my most commonly used colors for my comics. And these three here are specifically for Olivia's beak. So I'll start with this dark one, this dark gray. Fill that in. And then what I do, I'm going to lock that layer and select a slightly lighter shade of gray. Do a big thick stripe of that in the middle of her beak. And then this sort of grayish, tannish color and put that on the tip of her beak. And I do all three of these colors on the same locked layer because they need to blend together, but they need to also not affect anything else in the drawing. So once you have all those three together, you have your layer alpha locked, and then we're going to go up here to our adjustments, click on Gaussian Blur layer, and then just slowly drag your pen across the screen and you'll, and you'll see those colors bleeding and blending together. We'll do, for something this up close, yeah, about a th just about a 3% is all you need. That's all you want to do, a real, just a real gentle sweep of the pen, because if you go too fast, it... <laughs> yeah, um, I guess, uh, you know, uh, flashing warning for that. Uh, but yeah, so just a nice gentle sweep of the pen, do about a 3% blur, and that's all you need. And then finally, we'll go ahead and finish off the coloring with Finnegan's eyes. So we'll select this nice brown color. So here's actually a technique I've used for eyes. So that, this will actually be my, my introduction to some of my color shading. So for Finn's eyes, I'll go ahead and draw it up there in the corner of his eye since he's looking up towards Olivia. So make sure the eye is following the right direction. And we're going to lock that because we are going to add some more color to it. Eyes are not just one uniform color. They have, they have some, some shading and features to them. So we'll go ahead and select a slightly lighter shade of brown. Back to our brushes. And I'm going to use the noise brush under touch-ups. And bring that to, try to get my hand out of the way, around 10%, 9 or 10%. And just give that a gentle, actually even that's a little too much. We'll do a 5. No? Maybe a 10 was good. And just give that a Gentle sweep over the eyes, just to give them some, some pop. Go back to our regular inking pen, select black, add the iris, and to finish it off, select white, and just put a little dot up there in the corner where the iris meets the pupil, and that kind of looks like light uh, reflecting off the eyes and really kind of brings it to life. So that's just some, uh, some basic coloring there. So now that you've filled in your color, actually, before you do any final shading, check over and make sure that you don't have any stray colors hanging around somewhere as I try to find what layer this streak of brown ended up on. I think it was probably with the eyes. There it is. There we go. So already you can see how just adding some color to this panel has really kind of brought it more to life. It looks more like what you would expect from, from a, a, a comic panel, but there's still something missing. 
needs some shading that that will bring some some depth to it and i think at least in, in my own experience uh, experimenting with shading trying to make your drawings look more not, not exactly three-dimensional but giving them some sense of dimension it can be intimidating i know uh, especially for myself again since i did not go to art school didn't receive any kind of real formal art training so i had to just kind of teach myself what i was doing with this but it's actually uh, pretty simple so I'll, I'll show you what i do at least so let's go ahead and just start with olivia because she's mainly just has her white feathers to worry about so go ahead and find this layer with the white color where she is alpha lock that and we're going to stay on this layer and we colored her in with white so we just want to take a slightly darker shade not too extreme just I have this very light gray set aside so just a slightly darker shade than what the main color is and any place where part of her body overlaps another we're just going to put a, a thin line of that so here where her, you can see where her head kind of overlaps the shoulder of her wing and just put a little stripe of gray and here where her wing overlaps her body do a stripe of that if you're there here where her tail overlaps her leg and then just up here where her little crest feather overlaps the top of her head and already you can see just those few little lines give her that much more depth we'll do the same for finnegan here where his nose is overlapping this stripe of fur on his face just get that gray stripe here where his arm is overlapping his body go ahead and just put that there that's really all it is you just want to find a darker shade than the main a slightly darker shade than the main color and just put a thin little stripe of it wherever something overlaps something else and then you can even do um here on the elbow down in this lower part of the arm where it's lower down you just put that there and here around the bottom of his snout just do make it a little bit darker there and already you can see how much more that's brought them to life uh, with Finnegan we'll go ahead do the same thing with his darker fur so we'll lock that color that in where the ear kind of overlaps on the side of the head actually we'll go back to the white layer get some gray and put it here under See where his collar overlaps on his body. Do the same on this darker patch of fur. Pull that in a little bit. And then finally on his collar, we'll get just a little, just darken that blue up a little bit. And we'll go up here where his snout overlaps over his collar. Put a thin little, yeah, make sure I'm on the right layer. Put a thin little stripe of blue. And voila. Now we come to coloring and shading the floorboards. Go down to our dark brown layer. Make sure alpha lock is turned on. Now, something I found when drawing wood textures, there's actually a, a, a trick that I use that I think works out pretty well. There is, let me see if I can even find it, because I never, I never actually use it. There is, here, there is a pen that is technically for wood grains. Probably help if I had a brown color, I would be able to see it better.
So you can see that looks like four boards, um, but you have to, it's a little tricky to get the hang of because you do have to keep a very uh, even pressure on the pen or else you'll get darker spots where you press down harder. And it's, and you can also see, um, at least one of my biggest gripes with it is you can see the four boards are all perfectly uniformly up and down. There's no, um, I guess, field of depth to it. It, just, it looks very, very flat and it, it looks very, at least in my opinion, it looks very artificial. So what I actually do is again, here, here's the color brown that I used for the main floor. I'm going to take a slightly darker shade of brown. And I'm actually going to go into the painting brushes and select this dry brush and bring that up to about, yeah, about a 15%. And again, keeping that layer behind everything else. Actually, I'm even going to move that behind the wall just in case. Starting in the middle, just give it a quick sweep down. And then as you go out, bring it more onto the diagonal. And that way it, it still creates something kind of like a wood grain pattern, but you can change the direction and then the, the field of depth as much or as little as you want. And I, I just feel like it looks much more, if not as, if maybe not as realistic, it, it, I, it looks at least, uh, it's a little bit more manageable to work with and doesn't look quite so artificial and just plastered onto the picture. So that's at least my own preference. And then of course we still need to shade where thin is sitting on the floor so we'll go back to our regular and for inking I, I actually use the, the studio pen under the inking brushes so we'll go back and select that make sure the tip of that pen is a good size around a 15 bring him up and again where his body is sitting on the floor just do a line of darker brown color And there you have it. And then finally, uh, once we're finished, go ahead, a darker pen, and I'll just throw on a few speckles. Probably Finn's biggest identifying trait are his speckles. Put some all down the arms. And there you have it. So you can already see compared, you know, take this compared, put all our colors together on one layer. So keep in mind, again, this is what we started with and this is what we've ended up with now. And you can see even just a few minutes, just dropping in some colors and doing some very simple shading techniques just how much this has really helped bring this to life. So go ahead and uh, experiment with some of that uh, on, on, your, on your own end with some of your own drawings. Play around with uh, some of these tips and features you'll find in Procreate. And next time, bring that color back in. And next time, uh, I'll show you how I also use some of Procreate's features to add text bubbles into the comics to uh, finish everything off. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider helping out my channel by subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. You might also want to consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash floofandfeatherscomic, as well as visiting my main website or giving me a quick follow on social media. Links to everything are in the description below. And be sure to leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.